we will use the k epsilon turbulence model to compute the Reynolds stresses. And the k-epsilon turbulence model is a kind of eddy viscosity turbulence model. Here I want to give you an idea of what an eddy viscosity turbulence model is and what is the big assumption on which um, the, such turbulence models are based. I go back to the viscous shear stress. So if I look at an you know, vanishingly small chunk of fluid or fluid particle moving through the flow, it experiences a shear due to viscous forces, and, and the shear here is a little bit different so as shown only the shear in the x-direction. And we wrote that shear in terms of the velocity gradients, and you get the coefficient of viscosity mu, and for Newtonian fluid, um, mu is a constant, or it could be a function of temperature. Now you write the turbulent stresses or the Reynolds stresses in an analogous fashion, you say that um, you get, you know, so now in addition to that viscous shear, you have a shear due to the turbulent fluctuations. So this is due to turbulence. So let me put a superscript T here. Each term is analogous to a similar term for viscous forces. And we are basically saying that, you know, the the average effect of the fluctuations is to, cal is to cause an additional shear. And analogous to this, in an eddy viscosity turbulence model, you write this in terms of the velocity gradients. This is called the eddy viscosity, and you can think of that as analogous to the molecular viscosity. The greater is the eddy viscosity, greater is the uh, shear cost by these, um, these turbulent stresses. This is, if you recall, that's minus rho u prime v prime, the fluctuations, um, the average of that. And this has to be written in terms of the, you know, this is written in terms of Reynolds averages. So essentially you're written the fluctuating, the average of the fluctuations in terms of the Reynolds averages. The, the turbulence models that assume an eddy viscosity um, are useful, um, but they also have, you know, have problems, especially when you have separation and, and so on. And this is a model. It's, okay, it, it's not a conservation law. So it's based on guesswork. We know it's incorrect, but our hope is that it will give us useful engineering approximations. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is that the eddy viscosity is not a material property. It's, uh, you know, it's a function of x and y. In this case, it can vary spatially, and it has to be computed as part of the, the solution process. The other thing to keep in mind is that the, you know, the physical reasoning, uh, a hand-waving physical reasoning for writing, you know, for this expression is that you say, hey, you know, the molecular viscosity comes from the exchange of momentum between adjacent layers uh, due to molecular motion. And here you're getting, you know, in an analogous way, you're getting the turbulent shear due to the exchange of uh, momentum due to these turbulent eddies. Um, okay, so that's kind of a very quick kind of physical reasoning for why you would come up with an expression like that. That's a big assumption, by the way. One also, you know, would write an analogous expression for the normal stresses, and 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 then the next thing to do is to look at the k epsilon turbulence model that um, co that'll compute the the eddy viscosity for us.